A trip to the big dance is at stake for the winner of today's Mid-Continent Conference Final. Youngstown State is the number one seed in the tournament, and with players like Liz Hoger, you can see why they won the regular season title. The University of Buffalo enters this afternoon's title game on a 16-game winning streak at home. The Royals are led by junior Brenna Doty, who averages 17 points a game. Alumni Arena will be rocking as UB hosts the Lady Penguins with a trip to the NCAA tournament on the line next on Empire. We're live in 10. Have a good show, Nine. everybody. There's a two-second Okay, A on the line. Stand by to roll Five. A, stand by to track A. Four. Three. And roll A, two. track A. One. Live from Alumni Arena on the Amherst campus of the University of Buffalo, it's the Mid-Continent Conference Championship game featuring the Lady Penguins of Youngstown State against the Royals of UB. Good afternoon, everyone. Brian Blessing and Pete Lonergan here to call this game for you. And Pete, we're expecting a good one. These are two well-coached teams that can light it up, and there's so much at stake. Well, Brian, that's right. It's, uh, of course, the goal and the dream of every player to reach the field of 64 in the NCAA tournament. But today's winner will be especially nice for because they will be representing their institution for the first time in the history of their programs going to the big dance. Right, let's turn our attention to Youngstown State. This is a team that started slowly, but they are red hot now, 19 and 8. They're one lost record, and if they're going to succeed, they need a big day from all-conference player Liz Hoger. Liz Hoger, first team all mid-con performer, averaging 17 points a game, came into the tournament scoring only six the first night out, but bounced back last night with 18 big points. She will have to hit her average today for the Lady Penguins to be successful. In the mid-con conference on February 13th, the team that was in first place would host the conference tournament. Well, Youngstown State went on to win the regular season title. They're the top seed, but the tournament is on UB's home court, and they haven't lost in their last 17 appearances here. Big edge, and if the Royals are gonna have a big day, they rely on Brenna Doty. Brenna Doty will be their leader. She, again, is a first-team, mid-con, all-team performer, and she's averaging 17 points a game, and she came into the tournament with a four-night the first night, scoring only six points, and the second night, she bounced back with 11. She'll have to hit her stride and reach her average of 17 again today. This is only the sixth meeting between these two schools, but they have developed a nice little rivalry Last year in the conference tournament in the semifinals, Youngstown State got the best of UB. This should be a great one. UB and Youngstown State with a berth in the NCAA tournament on the line. We'll have the starting lineups and the tip-off when we come back. And we're just about set to get this one underway at Alumni Arena. Let's look at the starting lineups for the Lady Penguins at guard Colleen Cook. Shannon Beach sporting a new hairdo. We'll tell you about that. Anne-Marie Martin in the paint. Liz Holger and Carolyn McCombs are your forwards. There's Ed DiGregorio, the head coach, his 13th season at Youngstown State. And for the Royals at UB, Brenna Doty and Catherine Jacob, the freshman, the guards. Nicole Blakesley in the middle. Anne Gallagher and Sharissa Gardner are the forwards. Sal Viscalia, his 19th season at UB. A trip to the NCAA on the line. As we get set to tip this one off, and the Big A is rocking early, Pete. Brian, great crowd, great rivalry. Two teams that split in their season, their regular season rivalry. Evenly matched should be a terrific contest. Bernie Barabo and Jerry Gibbons, the referees, and the opening tip is controlled by Youngstown State. And right out of the gate, the three-point shot is buried by Anne-Marie Martin. So the Lady Penguins jump to will call this a two-pointer, a two-point lead. Had to put on the line. Anne-Marie is the post-up player, usually scores inside, but can hit that outside shot when left alone. Here's Jacob, who had a terrific game last night, and early Doty fires a three that is short off the iron and hauled down off the glass by Shannon Beach. Colleen Cook pushes it up to Liz Hoger. She spins and fires one off the glass around the rim and in, so Youngstown State has two baskets in their first two possessions. Liz Hoger, the only junior in the starting lineup, four sophomores. Good defense by Hoger, and it goes off the fingertips of Teresa Gardner, and Youngstown State will take over possession. So a quick start for the Lady Penguins. We thought there might be some nerves uh, 
uh, to get through, but uh, Youngstown State seems to be handling it nicely. Coach Ed DiGregorio said he wasn't concerned about it, even though he has an extremely young team, four sophomores and a junior in the starting lineup. Doty with the steal ahead of the pack. She'll put this one off the glass and in, and UB's on the board for two. Youngstown State up a deuce. See a little backcourt pressure. Catherine Jacob on Colleen Cook. Lady Bengals on offense. The baseline move down the lane is Shannon Beach. And they're going to call this one a charge. They call an offensive foul. Good rotation on defense by the Royals to pick up the charge. We started to mention the point guard matchup is an interesting one. Both point guards are out of Pittsburgh. Colleen Cook from North Catholic and Catherine Jacob from Penn Hills. Both of them were all-state performers in high school and they know each other very well. Good step in by Sharisa Gardner to force the turnover. And UB has an opportunity to tie this one up or even take the lead, which they can do with the three. They're very adept from the outside. Jacobs to Ann Gallagher. There's Cole Blakesley to the cutter. Doty, who hits one up and in off the glass. A nifty shot and the nice cut by Brenna Doty, and we're even at four. Youngstown State quickly up court. They'll send it back outside the beach and start their offense over. Defense! Defense! Good stepping on the end line. Good backdoor cut with the pass from the high post that time. But McComb stepped on the end line. Turnover for the Lady Penguins. Lady Penguins played all 2-3 zone and a couple of matchup zones last night in short spots, but we can see now that she had the heel, Kayla McCombs on the end line. We played all zone last night. Ed DiGregorio told us before the game they were gonna match up man-to-man -man as they did in both regular season games against the Royals. You beat Brennan Doty. Back out to the freshman point guard. What a year she's had, Captain Jacob. Gardner drives the lane and Traveling is the foul, so we'll stay tied at four, and the Lady Penguins will take over possession. Good defense there as they collapse on Gardner, cutting into the lane. Good court pressure again. Man pressure, no traps, no double teams. Hogan oh, beats that pressure nicely. Gets it to Colleen Cook. Swing it to Beach. Looks for Hogan, who works on Gardner, spins, and a travel is called. So turnovers at both ends of the court. Now play gets just a little bit ragged, Pete, and we thought that might be the case in the first few minutes as these teams feel each other out and get the nerves out of the way. That's right, Brian, and I think it's not as much nerves as it is good defense, good solid defense. They put great ball pressure. Both teams are great at putting pressure on the ball, and that's going to cause mistakes. The entry pass to Nicole Blakesley is picked off. Youngstown State comes back the other way in transition, and Anne Marie Martin has one off the glass and in. And the Lady Penguins back on top, 6-4. Anne Marie off to a good start. Had 22 points last night, 11 rebounds, and two blocks. So she's one of the major reasons why they're playing tonight. Good look by Gallagher down low to Blakesley, who can't make the layup, and Colleen Cook comes away with it. Great pass down low, but Beauty couldn't finish. And then at the other end of the court, a foul is called on Catherine Jacob. So fortunate sequence there for Youngstown and, and for Sal Biscaya, that's got to be disappointment. you got to finish those easy ones, well, Pete. In a big game like this that you expect to be close because both contests during the regular season were you have to finish around the basket. And they need, the Royals need to do a little better job in their transition defense getting back and protecting the basket. They've given up a couple of transition baskets, which is uncharacteristic. Colleen Cook to Pittsburgh, sophomore point guard. Pure point guard, scored no points last night, but it was of great value to the team. Five assists she had, she's only 5'7", six rebounds and four steals last night. So scoring is not her forte. She's a point guard, she's a leader, she's a floor general. She distributes the ball to the right player. And she just distributed a couple of free throws to give Youngstown State a four-point margin over UB. Watch Jacob handle the ball. Last night, Pete, amazing. No turnovers. And this is just a freshman running the show. Against full-court pressure, too, not half-court pressure. Gardner shot, short off the iron, hauled away by Beach. Cook looks to push it up court. Combs. 
Anne Marie Martin is off to a good start. There's the empty feed to Sharon Beach, and she's got the layup. So a good offensive sequence for Youngstown State. Great lob pass from the right wing that time. Let her over the baseline shoulder. Beautiful pass. Finish the play for the layup. And we've got a push called in. And that's a touch foul on Liz Holger, and that will not make Coach Steve Gregorio happy. Alicia Coleman in, in the ball game for UB. We've got a timeout on the floor. 15-48 left in the first half. 10-4 is the score. The Lady Bengals on top of the Royals. Back with more first half action in a minute. We're on the Empire Sports Network game here in Western New York. A lot to talk about. We'll see what happens with UB today. Of course, the Canisius Golden Griffins on their way to basketball's big dance. And Gallagher with the jump shot. And UB comes out of the timeout with a nice offensive sequence. Good teams always do good things out of timeouts. That time, reverse inbounds pass, reverse for Ann Gallagher, open jumper. She picked up right where she left off last night. Career high, 22 points last night. Great defense by Sharissa Gardner, who will come up with the tie-up of Liz Hoger and the arrow points UB's way. That was dynamite defense. Ball pressure, both teams love to good, put good ball pressure and use that as an offensive weapon. And there it is. That's your basic jump ball. Good defense. Well, the last foul call had less contact in that play. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Jacob. Looks for the cutter. Doty goes through the lane. Jacob behind the back. The feed down low to Cole Morgan. She has the shot blocked from behind by Martin. And Youngstown State comes away with it, then turns it over. And Jacob swings it to Gardner. Doty looks for the three. Goes back to Gardner, who's feeling it. Almost banks one in from the corner. And here comes Holger for the Lady Penguins. So back outside. Colleen Cook says, let's start it over. Good pressure defense by Brenda Doty. In Marie Martin wide open. That one's long off the iron. And the board hauled down by Alicia Colmergan. And Brenda Doty comes back for UB. These two teams split. There are two meetings during the year, and both of them were terrific basketball games. This time, Colmergan is tied up from behind as Colleen Cook sneaks around the back door and ties her up. Good aggressive play by the little 5'7 guard out of Pittsburgh, PA. And she comes up is. from behind, gets in without fouling, ties her up. Boisterous crowd on hand at Alumni Arena today. Uh, Youngstown State has a pretty good troop of fans that have made their way in for this one. And, of course, UB hosting this tournament has their fans here as well. The turnover. Colmergan has it. Looks to Catherine Jacob. And UB had the numbers, but that didn't work out. But the three-point shot. Bank tone by Kim Kuhn. Did she call it, Pete? Kim Kuhn. <laughs> she didn't call it, but she had nine big points off the bench last night. And now an offensive foul as Colleen Cook throws an elbow, and that will come back the other way, and UB has an opportunity to take the lead. The Royal ball pressure is starting to pay off, causing a couple turnovers on the last two trips down the floor. The Lady Penguins have got to take better care of the basketball. They've got to give it up before that ball pressure begins and get into their offense. They haven't even gotten into their offensive sets. Early on, Youngstown State has turned the ball over eight times to UB's four. Coach DiGregorio was very concerned before the game and said to us, the team that turns the ball over the fewest times should be the winner today. So his squad is not off to a good start in that category. Down low, Colmergan spins. The fadeaway jump shot is banked up and in, and the UB Royals have their first lead of the game at 11-10. Combs looks down low for Martin. She comes away with it and goes right to the hoop. Good basket. Give credit to Alicia Colmorgan for the Bulls. And she's bigger and stronger than Nicole Blakesley, and she's a better matchup against Anne Marie Martin in there. So good substitution by Coach Sal Biscagli. And on the inbounds, the UB throws it away. So Youngstown State back on top by a point, and that sloppy play on the inbounds. Yeah. Almost compounded by a basket on the inbound. Good play by McComb to strip Colmer again. Her shot is up and short. Hoger with the rebound. And that should be a travel, and is. 
good defense by Colbergen who gets her hands on the basketball. And Liz Holger uh, seems a little frustrated in the early game. Well, you know, I think what's happening is she's trying to step through traffic. They are really keying on her, and anytime she gets her hands on the ball, they're double and triple teaming her. So she's trying to step through traffic to see some space to get the shot off, and without putting that ball down, you're going to get called for a travel. The set pins name in the game from Milton, New York. So, yeah. Catherine Jacob last night, boy, she put on a dribbling exhibition in the victory over Northeastern Illinois. And this young lady, a freshman, really wants to show nicely for UB. And her counterpart is Colleen Cook, who pushes it up court. Combs thinks of a three and still drives the lane, sends it outside to Hogger. Can't leave her wide open, and she drains the three. The inside-outside game. Dribble penetration, break the defense down, draw the player to you, then kick it out for the three. Gallagher to Kinsney. Kim Kuhn can light it up from there. And Jacobs, of all people, comes away with the rebound to the left-hander. And Kinsney can't make it, but here's Brenna Doty for three. You can't give the Royals three opportunities, Brian. And actually, that's their first series of offensive boards. They have not... If if Coach Sal Vizalga is not happy about something, it has to be. They have not taken care of the offensive boards thus far, but th that series they did. Great feed by Colleen Cook to the backdoor cutter. McCombs goes to the basket, and she draws the foul. We talked to Sal Vizalga before this game, Pete, and uh, he, we tried to find out what he thought Ed DiGregorio was going to do in terms of keeping an eye on Brenna Doty. And here you see the replay. Good Entry uh, feed from Colleen Cook. Obviously, you can't give either Hoger or Doty a wide open look because if they've got that wide open look, you can put it on the board. Yes, yeah, Sal was concerned because of their versatility that some of their players, even their inside players like Anne Marie Martin, could come outside and hit the jump shot, or the outside players could beat you off the dribble and take you to the to the hole. And that's exactly how they started the game. Anne Marie Martin hitting the uh, the jump shot from on the line. Anne Marie Martin comes away with an offensive rebound, and Youngstown State has another opportunity in the game. Shelly Allen, the fadeaway jump shot, no good. Quinsley comes down with the board, and the Royals look to run. Jacob with the ball. Play number two. We'll see what that is. <laughs> Gallagher to Jacob. That means they're looking for Brenna Doty for three. And she can't connect. Prisney keeps it alive, but then it's hauled away by Anne Marie Martin. Royals continue to struggle on the offensive glass. One and done will not beat this team today. What did Coach D say? Put it in the fish basket. That's, That's how right. Win. You gotta put it in the fish basket. Everything else is great, but the one thing that really counts is scoring. And Colleen Cook muscles her way through the lane, but that'll be an offensive foul as and Gallagher steps in. So Colleen Cook, that's two fouls. Trying, trying to do a little bit too much. She's off balance, leaning in, gets caught for the charge. 10.57 remaining first half action from Alumni Arena. It's Youngstown State on top of UB in the Midcon Conference Championship game. Back in a moment. Well, take a seat, Sal. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to put some miles on the court today. Coach Sal getting inspiration from his brother George right across the way who's working those referees like he normally does. George, his brother George is part of this home streak as Sal's coaching, I think, some nights. You can't get family technicals, can you? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know that last play where Colleen Cook turned it over and charged? Coach Ed DiGregorio told us what he asked his players to do is play within your limits. Don't try to do things that you're not capable of doing. That time, Colleen was a little out of control. Out of the timeout. Kim Kuhn fires up a three. UB gets another opportunity as Ian Gallagher hustles and reins it in. And here's Catherine Jacob to Doty. She gets the screen from Prinsney. Doty picks up the dribble. Good pressure applied by McCombs. Shot clock at seven. And here's Jacob. Down to Prinzning. She pulls up with a jump shot and a good sequence there. The nice feed by Jacob set that one up, Pete. The dribble penetration created the passing lane. Now we'll see the Bulls come up to their half-court pressure defense. The Royals, I should say. The Bulls are the men's version. 
halfway home. Ten minutes left, first half action, and we're even at 16. Long range shot fired up, short off the iron. That shot fired up by Shelly Allen, and Yugi comes away with it. Here's Jacob. Goes up the dribble, swings it to Doty. Gallagher works for position down low. Jacob thinks about a three. Cook's got to be careful here. She already has two quick ones. Long range three fired up long off the iron by Kim Kuhn, and that board is hauled away by Teresita Jones in the ball game. Jones from Cleveland. McCombs quickly at the other end. These two teams aren't bashful, Pete. No, they like to shoot the perimeter shot at the end of transition and hope that they can get somebody to the boards. And Jacobs tries the high step, and it <laughs> doesn't work out. And Youngstown State quickly comes the other way in transition. There's a travel. Another unforced turnover for the Penguins, the Lady Penguins. Shelly Allen zigged when she should have zagged. Or zigged and zagged at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All without putting that ball down before the pivot foot moved. And now in the ball game for UV, Megan McRae, the freshman guard from Corey, Pennsylvania. Nine minutes left first half, tied at 16. There you see a pretty good number of turnovers in the Youngstown still not taking care of the ball the way Coach Dooley really liked them to. Good feed by Prinzing down to Gallagher. She can't come away with it, but fights hard, gets the rebound, and she is throttled by Shannon Beach, but that's just good hard work down in the paint by Ann Gallagher. Shannon Beach definitely with the foul that time, and again, created by offensive rebounds. When you keep the ball alive on offense, you usually are in a high percentage area where they have to foul you to stop you. Shannon Beach did look like Rodman on that one, throwing the big hip in. And then Gallagher comes up with the jump shot. So Gallagher keeps the possession alive and then converts a deuce that puts UB up 18-16. Captain and team leader Ann Gallagher came up with a career high last night, 22 points, and she's picked up where she left off tonight. Liz Hoger back in the ballgame tries to force one down low to Teresita Jones, and another travel is called. So the Lady Penguins come unravel just a little bit. Royals are keying on Liz Hoger. They're not going to let her do anything without a hand in her face when it comes to shooting or being contested off the dribble. So she will have to fight a tough battle to get any good looks at the basket today. Here's Prince's name. Swing it to Megan McRae. Over to Catherine Jacob who tosses up a three and can't convert. Rebound hold away by Shannon Beach. State, five team fouls, UB just two. Jacob, good hustle, and do we get a tie-up? No, the referees say play on, and Cook sends it down low. And great hustle by Catherine Jacob to get up off the floor and get back on the floor to tie that one up. The possession arrow will belong to the Lady Penguins, but boy, that's pressure DP. Well, the interior defense of the Royals has been excellent. Every time Colleen Cook has tried to bounce past the ball down to open players, on the baseline, it's been intercepted. It's heating up. UB on top of Youngstown State by two. 7.47 left, first half action. Back in a moment. The Empire Sports Network. Sabres coming off a heartbreaking overtime loss late last night in Anaheim. Brian, when you talk about defense creating offense, the Royals have scored 13 points off of turnovers to Youngstown's two points off of turnovers. So the Royal defense has really done the job for them today. There's the feed down low. Blakesley back in the game. She's got it, loses it. She's tied up on the floor. Loose ball, they keep it alive, and they're still fighting for it. Good hustle by Blakesley, but a good call by Anne-Marie Martin, who actually calls timeout before Blakesley gets her hand back on it. Calling timeout so that they retain possession. And we're going to take a timeout. 18-16, 7.25 left. First half action. The Midcon Conference Championship game. Let's take a look at the Mid-Continent first team by Sitco, title sponsor of the Mid-Continent Conference Championship. Radiance Clark, a sophomore from Northeast Illinois who got in foul trouble last night, Pete, and Brenna Doty from UB. She can nail them from the outside. Now there you see Barbara Gorbovo from Eastern Illinois, Liz Hoger in action today from Youngstown State, and Mandy Armstrong from Troy State. 
And Brian add uh, also to that list, Catherine Jacob, who made the first team all newcomer team this year in Midcon for the Royals. You be on top by two. Liz Holder after the cross court pass. Back to Cook as they reverse it. McCombs comes over to the top of the defense. Looking for Lauren Blouser, who's in the game now. Royals mixing their defense up, showing zone this time. 2-3 matchup zone. And Marie Martin facing pressure to Cook. And now to Blouser, and the shot clock goes off. Good Give defense credit to the crowd and the defense. Defense and the crowd noise. They couldn't hear their teammates yelling from the bench, get the shot off. So another defensive turnover forced by excellent defense by the Royals. And Jacob looks for Doty instead. He's swing it to Megan McRae, who's tied up, and we've seen our share of jump balls, and this one will go Youngstown State's way. Megan McRae, of course, this year coming off a knee injury in their high school playoffs, which slowed her down in the offseason, playing with that knee brace, is one of the highly sought after recruits that Coach Sal was able to bring into the program this year. Martin for three, short off the iron. That board hauled down by Doty, and they'll call a travel before she gets rid of it, and the Royals and the crowd beg to differ. Falling off balance. She got the travel call. I don't know whether she was bumped. I couldn't see whether she was bumped or whether she just lost her balance, but she did travel. I thought she got rid of it before. Let's take a look. No, she still had that right pivot, but she, there was definite contact. <laughs> Although I say let them play on, and the referees have let the, these two teams scrap for it, and it's been a great first half. Hauger creates a foul there. The block is called on Megan McRae, so Hauger cannot find any open space. She forced that one up, but we'll get two from the line. Well, you have a little bit of an idea now. Look at her, how he ha she handles the ball, changes directions, pump fakes, leans in to draw the foul, why she's a first team mid-con performer, all first team uh, performer, because she is excellent off the dribble at breaking the defense down and getting to the basket and drawing fouls, going for the foul out there. Hugger, averaging just about 17 points a game. Here's the Lady Pinklins within one. 78% free throw shooter. She's been there 133 times to give you an idea how good she is at going to the basket. This one for the tie. 18 you up. You don't want her on the foul line, excuse me, Brian, because she shoots 78%. She's not one of the players you'd like to see at the end of the game. She fouls against you. Nice reach in by Anne-Marie Martin as Doty tried to force it into Cole Morgan. Youngstown State comes up with a good D. Doty is there to tip that one away. Doty kind of a quiet tournament. She had 11 points in each of UB's wins, but this is a young lady. If she gets that open look, she can put 25 on the board on you in a hurry. Well, she's definitely the premier player in the program right now, and she will be the one that they'll go to when the game's on the line. Entry pass is picked off by Ann Gallagher, and UB comes away with it. So both teams scrapping on defense. This has been a hard-fought first half. Here's Sharisa Gardner back in the game, down to Alicia Colmer again. Goes up with a little jump hook, comes away with her own rebound. Jump hook again is short, and Colleen Cook comes away with it. And Cook swings it to Warren Blouser. Wide open from the baseline. That is short by Hoger, and it's going to go over to UB. Liz Hoger talking to herself, wide open jump shot that time. I think she was surprised that she was that far open because she hasn't had that look, good a look at the basket all day. We're approaching the five minute mark of the first half, tied at 18. Gallagher forces her way down low, back outside. Doty works on McCombs, back outside to Catherine Jacob. And Gallagher's had a strong first half. Back to Gallagher. She works in the lane. Left-hand shot. Doesn't even draw iron. And the ball hauled away by Anne-Marie Martin. So, Youngstown State starting to step up the pressure on defense. 
well, they're taking care of business on the defensive boards, which you have to do. You'd be not a strong offensive rebounding team all tournament long. Oh, nice defense there. And Marie Martin had that one rejected and then off her elbow. So both teams hanging tough on the defensive end. This is a beautiful defensive play by Alicia Colmergan. First the reaching by Gallagher, but then you see it. Colmergan gets a piece of it, and on the follow-through, Martin pushes it out of bounds. Colmergan contributed nine points and eight rebounds last night in the win, so she's been a vital force off the bench. Doty can't convert the driving move on the baseline, but UB comes away with it again. Gardner. Doty back to Gardner. Looks to Colmergan, who operates the high post. Brian, you have to be impressed with the unselfishness of both squads. No one's trying to force anything and no one's taking difficult shots. They're letting the offenses create the opportunity. That's execution, that's unselfishness. Watch Sharissa Gardner this afternoon, number 25 for UB. She is dynamite on those entry passes, finds the cutter and Gallagher, and the block is called on Ann Marie Martin. So Gallagher will shoot a couple. Shelly Allen back in the game for the Lady Penguins. Ann Gallagher, the captain and team leader, 5'10 forward, considered maybe the best inch for inch of 5'10 rebounder in the conference. Rattles that one around the rim and out. This year she's developed a little bit of a perimeter game to make her a complete player. So she's effective not only in the paint, but out on the perimeter. A PNP lady. That one's short. Rebounded by Beach. So Gallagher misses both at the line. We stay tied at 18. Kick it down low. Anne Marie Martin has it outside to Beach, who launches a three short off the iron. The long rebound to Catherine Jacobs, who has Gardner up court. Good hustle by Beach to break that play up. Jacob looks for the opportunity to get that one up court in a hurry. Shannon Beach did a nice job of transition defense that time and read the eyes of Catherine Jacob. As soon as she released that pass, she went for the interception. Didn't get there on time to retain possession, but deflected it out of bounds. Here's Doty. To Gardner. Gallagher working down low. She and Shannon Beach really putting on a battle. Holmergan puts it on the floor, kicks it outside. Jacob for three. Short. Loose ball is run down. The good hustle play by Shelly Allen, who comes away with it and gives the Lady Penguins an opportunity to grab the lead. And they go for it with their big gun, Liz Hunger. But she is long off the iron for three-point range. And here comes UB. Jacob to Doty. They've got to get up on her. Combs does, but the good first step by Doty. And no foul called on this play. A lot of contact with the body. They call, they call it a block, but boy, Doty caught one with the hip. They'll call that a clean block. Anne Marie Martin doing her job protecting the basket. You keep playing until you hear the whistle. That's right. No, Jacob fires up an air ball. Gardner hustles, keeps it alive, and Gallagher runs it down. And then a foul called on McComb. So just a great all-around hustle play. First by Gardner to save the possession. Gallagher goes and retrieves it and draws the foul. Well, we saw an example of two plays in a row. You play the whistle. Everyone thought in the house that it was a foul. It wasn't a foul. It was a block shot. That play, everyone thought the ball was rolling out of bounds. Second effort by Ann Gallagher. The reward is a trip to the foul line. And UB now in the bonus. Seventh team foul against the Lady Penguins. Gallagher front end of the one and one. And she gets up there and knocks it down. 68% free throw shooter. She's had some trouble with a groin pull, and we saw her favoring that a little bit last night, but she, she's the captain of the team. She wasn't going to miss today's opportunity to get to the big dance. Sure, Colmergan gets good position, but that's on the end line. And that will go to the Lady Penguins. Coach Sal putting their... Putting the Royals in their full court press now. You talked about Sal Biscay being a creature of habit, and having the tournament on his home court has certainly helped that uh, little trend, right? Yes, it has, and they've responded well. He was concerned about their nerves coming into the tournament, but he's really pleased with the way his squad has responded to the pressure of playing in front of the home crowd. 
because the expectations are certainly that the streak will continue one more time today. Hoger down low to Martin, and she rattles one off the glass and in. And Youngstown State re-grabs the lead at 2019 with two minutes left in the first half. The Bulls have been a team of runs in this tournament. They had an 18-0 run at the end of the first half, the first game of the tournament. And yesterday they had a 12, they made their first 12 out of 14 shots in the second half against uh, Troy State. So they've been a team of runs. Shot clock down to four. Gallagher forces one up as the time of possession was winding down and Youngstown State comes away with it. And to finish that point, Brian, the Lady Penguins have prevented the uh, Royals from any long, sustained runs of scoring in this first 19 minutes. I'd like to welcome our viewers in Chicago on Sports Channel Chicago. It's Youngstown State in white against the UB Royals in blue. The Midcon Conference Championship game, a birth in the NCAA tournament on the line. Brian Blessing and Pete Weber with you today. And we said on the way into this one, Pete, this was going to be a terrific basketball ball game, Pete. And, uh, if these two teams have not let us down. It can't get any closer than a 2019 score with a minute to go in the first half. Good strong driving move off the glass and short by McCombs. UB looks to run. Shannon Beach comes away with it. So UB a little bit ragged. Another excellent job of getting back on defense by Sam Beach and knowing where the ball is. Good entry pass to Anne-Marie Martins. Had a big first half for the Lady Penguins. Out to Liz Hoger. Over the top to Hoger. She'll let fly. And that one's off the iron. No good. Rebound to Combs. And that's rejected by Colmergan. And will stay with Youngstown State. Good work on the offensive glass by the Lady Penguins. And Liz Hoger continues to struggle from the floor. Ooh, the cutter was there. Well, Youngstown State now. Coaching 30 seconds remaining. First half on top by a point. Hauger drives the lane, has it rejected, comes up with the rebound, and draws the foul. So good effort by Liz Hoger, who has had a rough first half. Oh, what a great first step, though, to get the baseline on Kim Kuhn. And then the terrific second effort keeps her alive and earns her a trip to the foul line. Hoger a little bit frustrated, Pete. The UB's defense has really collapsed on her in this first half, but as you said, you cannot let her operate on the foul line. Well, you know, uh, Coach Sal told us before the game that that was one of the keys to have the opportunity to win today, and that was to know where Liz Hoger is at all times on the floor so that they can double and triple team her when she tries to go one-on-one. -on -one. And you see Hoger, just about 17 points a game. She has now staked the Lady Penguins to a three-point lead in the final 30 seconds of this first half from Alumni Arena on the Amherst campus of the University of Buffalo. Of course, with no backcourt rule, they can hold for the last shot in backcourt. Now Catherine Jacob, the freshman point guard for UB. Ten seconds left. And Gallagher look for Brenda Doty to be the recipient of some screens to get open. There's Doty with the quick first step, fires it up, no good. And that's the end of our first half. It's been a good one. 22-19. It's the Lady Penguins of Youngstown State on top of the UB Royals. We'll be back with all the stats and an interview with the MidCon Commissioner, Dr. John Steinbrecher, in a moment. Youngstown State and Ed DiGregorio on top of the Royals by three. Stuff here <laughs> at halftime. 22-19 is our halftime score. The Lady Penguins on top of U-Beam. Today's first halftime stats are sponsored by Sitco, title sponsor of the Mid-Continent Conference Championship. Check the numbers, Pete. Field goal percentage for both squads is not what they normally shoot. 27 for UB, 32 for Youngstown. Obviously, the tough defense by both clubs is a factor in that. Two for 11 and three-point field goals. UB has not been to the foul line, only one out of four, and the Pen Lady Penguins have been there eight times, made seven. Look Rebounds at the turnovers. 
there you see it, Pete. Yep. The defense is really yep. starting to make a difference in this game. 16 to 12, a lot of turnovers. The ball's been on the floor 12. a lot. And, and Buffalo has scored 13 points off of turnovers, while Youngstown has only scored six. Big factor. And the leading scorers in the first half. Brennan Doty, seven points for UB, and Gallagher with five. And that's pretty much you know, the status quo for the Bulls. This is a team with balance. Hoger with nine, and Marie Martin uh, have been the big guns. The all-conference performers, yeah. They, they're leading both squads, the all-conference performers in scoring. However, both of them have earned every point they've gotten in the first half because of the great defense being played on them. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to tip it off. Second half action in the Midcon Conference Championship game. So he's really proud of them, not only as players, but as students also. And we come back. Second half action. UB with the possession. Three-point deficit at this stage. Gonna Doty with the crossover dribble kicks it to Sharisa Gardner. Outside to the freshman point guard Catherine Jacob. Good entry pass to Ann Gallagher. She's off the glass, up and in, as she goes up and over Ann Marie Martin. And it's a one-point game again. We had three ties in the first half, three lead changes. Biggest lead or spread was six points with 16 minutes to go in the first half, so it was early on. Good pressure by Sharisa Gardner, and Colleen Cook comes up limping just a bit. Here's Liz Holder, the big offensive threat for the Lady Penguins. Anne Marie Martin kicks it over the top to McCombs. Backs it back out. Swings to Hogger from the baseline. That one partially deflected by Gallagher, and UB comes back with a chance for the lead. Doty wide open for three. Long off the iron. And no offensive rebounds in sight for the Royals. Combs with the move around Doty. She works down low. Good hard work there to stay with that and come up with the basket. That's Catherine McComb. McCombs, a second team all mid-con performer this year and was a member of the all newcomer team last year as a freshman what a great recruiting class coach dean had two years ago with four sophomores now in the starting lineup to go along with liz hoger the lone junior the rest of the conference has to be concerned about the lady penguins playing in the final game this year with four sophomores in the starting lineup they're going to be around for a while to come Colleen Cook hobbled just a little bit, and she'll come out of the lineup. She's replaced by Shelly Allen. And the opportunity missed down low. So Youngstown State comes the other way. Good defense by Beach that time, not committing the foul, even though Blakesley had the position on it. Entry pass to Martin. She goes uh, right into Sharisa Gardner, and they'll call traveling. And again, uh, to start the... First couple of minutes of this second half, beat defense is the story. Defense causing turnovers. Here's the feed down to Martin. Good position by Sharice Gardner. Almost drew the charge. There's Blakesley. Swings it to Sharice Gardner to Catherine Jacob. The Royals are running what you call a flex offense. Screen down and screen away. Ball goes from elbow to elbow for open jump shots. And Gallagher travels before she puts it on the floor, so Youngstown State forces another turnover. Royals in their half-court trap now. These two the idea teams. here is get the ball in the middle of the floor so you can attack it to either side when you get close to the basket. These two teams and they split their regular season meetings, both winning on home court. UB looking for their 18th straight win here on the Alumni Arena court. Liz Hogger and Youngstown State have other ideas. Liz Hoger with a great drive in traffic. Pump fake, got the shot off. Shooters roll for the score. And Gallagher entry pass to Nicole Blakesley. And last night in the semifinal game over Northeastern Illinois, that was the key to UB's success. They got the ball down in the paint with good opportunities to put the Ducks away. Yeah, they did an excellent job of getting the ball inside last night. And their inside players really responded. Now UB, down three. Jacob to Gardner, who thinks about the baseline move, swings it to Gallagher, pulls up short off the iron, rebound, and hauled away by Carolyn McCombs. She has it stripped away, but Shana Beach runs that one down. Anne Marie Martin. There's McCombs wide open on the baseline. No good, and 
Catherine Jacob pulls it down, and UB has the numbers coming back. Jacob on the floor to Gardner, puts it up. Oh, what and a an great offensive defensive call. play that time. What a play to hustle back and get in on that. Number 13, Shelly Allen draws the charge on a three-on-one Royal advantage. Great play on defense. She got there, too. Yes, she did. Good hustle. That's what win games for you when you don't give up on any play until you hear the whistle. UB applying a little pressure at midcourt. The Lady Penguins handle that nicely. Two well-coached teams. It's enjoyable to watch them execute and try to deliver the knockout punch, which I don't think either team can do because they're so evenly matched. Shannon beat shot clock down to three. Martin pulls up. That one's not going to draw iron. And a foul called on the reach in by Carolyn McCombs and good defense again. I mean, if if the ball's not on the floor, you're fighting to get a shot off before the shot clock goes off. They are really working hard, both squads on defense. And you know that the what happens is you get frustrated a lot of times on offense, and it takes your uh, confidence away from you when you go down the floor and you can't get any easy scores and usually it affects you when you go back on defense but both teams uh, have been energized by their defensive uh, stops and gallagher swings it to blake we've got a foul down low that may be another quick one on mccombs that's on mccombs and that's three on her Coach D can go eight deep with his squads. However, none of the people off the bench in the first half scored for him. So it's not a, uh, a productivity uh, issue when he goes to the bench. We're going to take a timeout. Second half underway. It's a three-point lead for Youngstown State over UB. Back in a moment. Sal Pascal talking to his kids. Let's go. Got to make a run. Come on, UB. That pretty much sums it up. We got to make a run. We got to make a run, but both teams are so good defensively. I don't see that happening this afternoon, Brian. Youngstown State, 52 points they scored in the first half last night against Troy State. They were held to 22 tonight by the Royals. Let's see out of the timeout if UB can come up with a good shot. They did that in the first half. There's Brody clobbered by and there's McCombs foul. again. Bad foul by Carolyn McCombs. And she will quickly take a seat as Shelly Allen will come in. So that's uh, three fouls for McCombs in a span of maybe 20 seconds. And she is their leading three-point scorer because she's got 35 three-point field goals. Had a great night the first night. 33 points she scored the first night of the tournament against Western Illinois as they avenge their loss to Western in the championship game last year. Nine of 10 from the floor, all five of her threes and all 10 of her free throws. Blake's so, lead, down low to Gallagher. Shannon Beach comes away with it. Shannon Beach with the green hairdo today. <laughs> Celebrating St. Patrick's Day a little early. Entry pass. Blakesley can't get a handle on it, but slides it over to Brenna Doty, so. The Royals come away with an opportunity, down three. Gardner to Blakesley, and she's got the layup up and in. Good entry pass. When you make that pass from below the foul line extended, and a steal on the inbounds, Doty is fouled by Shelly Allen, so UB steps it up. They're down one, and they've got the crowd into it now. The score and the full court, court pressure caused the turnover that time. There's Doty and Allen with the reach in. And uh, five minutes into this second half, and Pete will see if this will be a factor down the line, but the Lady Penguins already with five fouls will be just with one. Off the inbound, it's Alicia Comergan, and UB has taken a one-point lead. The Royals step up the pressure in the backcourt. Cook tries to break it, gets it to Anne-Marie Martin as Youngstown State looks to calm things down. Colgan swings at the beach. Her shot short off the iron. Almost gets a kind roll. But UB may be making that run that Sal Viscalia was asking for. Doty with the strong first step. And we've got a jump ball. And the arrow. Shannon Beach looking for the foul call that time. It didn't go her way. 
The arrow belongs to Youngstown State. And watch what happens now as they beat full court pressure. When you take a quick shot at the end of full court pressure and the defensive team that's pressing gets the rebound, that's as good as a turnover. And that's what the Royals are trying to get Youngstown to do. Take that quick shot at the end of breaking full court pressure and get the rebound and go the other way. Hogan tries to beat the trap. And they're going to call a reaching foul on Sharisa Gardner. That was a good call. She got hammered as she came over the half court line. Let's take another look at this. UB oh, yeah. trying to turn the heat up. The body. Doty got the ball, but Gardner got the hip. Another lead change. <laughs> UB on top by one. The Lady Penguins have had the answer. See if they can do it again. Colin Cook. And this time a foul on Sharisa Gardner, and she does not agree with this call. No, she doesn't. On the baseline drive that time, she was called for blocking. Third foul on Sharisa. 27-26, 14-04 remaining in the second half. The winner moves on to the NCAA tournament. It will be the first appearance for either of these schools in college basketball's big dance. Shelly Allen works on a Breda Doty. Crossover dribble. She goes down the lane, fires one off the glass and in. Good strong move by Shelly Allen and the Lady Penguins are back on top. Shelly Allen, senior leader, coming to the forefront with Carolyn McCombs in foul trouble. Coming again to Gardner. Captain Chaper. Calling out signals. To the captain, Ann Gallagher. Gardner has Hoger to deal with. Shot clock down to three, two. And as the shot clock goes off, Catherine Jacob fires one up that's short off the iron. So a good defensive possession there for uh, the Lady Penguins as they deny UB the opportunity to get a good shot away. Catherine Jacob, Jacob has been quiet today. Colbergen with a good defensive play, tips it off the board. And the Royals come back the other way. They look to regain the lead. Down low, Colmergan. She's got the easy two up and in. Great help off the bench by Colmergan. This has every indication of going down to the wire, doesn't oh, it? Yeah. Every possession seems to be a lead change. Over the top of the defense, Beach. She'll come cross court to a wide open Colleen Cook who has the quick first step around Colmer and can't get it. And Marie Martin with the offensive rebound and the putback. And lays it up with her left hand on the drive. Colleen Cook. Great shot. Good follow by Martin. Youngstown State back on top. Lord Colmer to Gallagher. Jacob to Doty for three. Short off the iron, had the line, but not the distance. This one, she's got the good wide open look. She won't miss two in a row of those wide open. And the three pointer as you be on top by two. Beach drives the lane, and that will be blocked out of bounds. And Youngstown State will regroup, and we will too. Sal Fiscalia for UB, Ed DiGregorio, the coach of Youngstown State. It's nail-biting time. <laughs> Back in a minute. U UB's run, basically a result of turnovers. Yes, and now the uh, Lady Penguins have settled down. We've got turnovers, 26 for both teams. In points off of turnovers, the uh, Royals, of course, are leading 19 to 8 in that category. Very, very important part of the game. In the lineup for UB, Kim Kuhn. Hoger to inbound, comes way outside to Colleen Cook, who will swing it down to Hoger. And that uh, tipped out of bounds by Gardner. So Youngstown State maintains possession. Over 1,200 on hand this afternoon at Alumni Arena to watch the Midcon Conference Championship game. And we're seeing a good one. Cook looks to Beach down low, comes back to Hogan. 
shot clock violation again. They're not looking at the shot clock, and the crowd noise is keeping the bench from allowing them to holler and get them to take that shot before the shot clock buzzer goes off, and they're shooting in front of their own bench. So you can just imagine uh, how loud that crowd noise is and what an effect it's having. Home court advantage. Wanna Doty to Gallagher to Gardner. Gardner will pull up. A high arcing rainbow goes in off the glass. That one she should have called. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to beat the trap. Shannon Beach down low to a wide open. To Sita Jones, who cannot handle the pass. And Gallagher is down and in pain. Yeah, she looks like she's in a great deal of pain. Now, and you be on top by four and an opportunity to stretch it out a little bit. This has been a direct result of solid defense. 21 points off of turnovers for the Royals with only eight for the Lady Penguins. When the Doty tries to go around Colleen Cook, almost loses it out of bounds, but recovers. There's the entry beat. Blakesley can't get the handle on it. Yep. Good look. Yep. And, she, and she had... There's Gallagher. Yeah, there's on the sideline trying to loosen up, get back in. She had uh, T. Jones sealed off that time. Blakesley, so she was unable to finish the play around the basket. Cook beats the trap this time to Shannon Beach. Back outside, Cook. Swing it over to Liz Hoger to Teresita Jones. Back outside, Hoger's got it, goes around, Doty pulls up, Wong off the board, and the rebound to Shannon Beach, but the, the foul down low against UB. Good screen and roll that time. T. Jones was open as she rolled to the basket. Liz took the shot instead. Foul goes against Kim Kuhn, and Ann Gallagher is back. The senior. Will come back and guard Shannon Beach. So well, that's certainly good to see that Ann Gallagher did not stay out of the lineup too long. Let's see how effective she is now that she's back in the game. Shelly Allen had the cutter. Teresita Jones working for position. Beach. There's Jones rejected by Colmer again, who'll come away with it. And then a frustrated Teresita Jones will reach in from behind, and that will be UB's basketball. Good That's, defense. Again, when you don't play the whistle, she drives, she gets the shot blocks, looks to the ref for a call instead of going after the loose ball, and that cost her. By the time she got back into play, she had the foul. Oh. UB on top by four. Halfway home in the second half. The winner, the winner of the NCAA tournament. Sloppy pass by Gardner. She got away with one. Then on the entry pass to Colmer again, it will be Jones again with the reaching foul, and that puts UB in the bonus. With 9.53 to go. You see the loose ball on the floor. The Royals are in the bonus, and it's starting to show the UB's bench strength with being able to go 10 deep, whereas... Coach D can only go eight deep, and he's only gotten two points from Shelly Allen off the bench all day. Well, we're gonna hit the front end of a one and one. Here's the bonus. Royal starting to wear the Lady Penguins down. Six point UB lead, and the Royals continue to apply the pressure defensively. Shannon Beach to Shelly Allen, pulls up. That's a two. Kelly Allen looking to the ref for the three-point field goal call, but her foot was on the line. Here's Doty. Good defense by Cook. Will come back the other way. The steal. Colmergan gets back, but not in time. So a big sequence for the Lady Penguins, who are back within two. And guess what, Brian? Defense, name of the game, gets them back into it again. Two great defensive teams we're watching today. Lisa Gardner looks for Kim Kuhn. Here comes that flex cut along the baseline and a screen down, so the ball is reversed to the opposite elbow. Doty, wide open, can't get it to go, and the Lady Penguins come back, and here's their opportunity to tie or take the lead. 
Allen to Shannon Beach. There's Hoger in the corner. Good first step around Ann Gallagher. And Ann Marie Martin misses an easy layup, but we've got a foul on Alicia Colmergan, and Youngstown State has come back and quickly. Ann Marie in the right place at the right time. The ball fell right into her hands. She missed the layup, but stayed with it. Loose ball, picks it up, misses the layup, but gets fouled. So Youngstown State will inbound. Five team fouls on the Royals. On the inbound, Ann Marie Martin. And the whole foul, uh, holding foul called against Alicia Colmergan. Good execution that time. Freed up Ann Marie Martin underneath the basket. Fourth foul on Alicia. And now the Lady Penguins one foul away from being in the bonus. And this game is pretty much equal on all fronts. And the yeah. foul. Martin. A little jump hook is short. Gardner will come away with it. And Brian, you can't really say the veterans are going to take over because you've only got Ann Gallagher, a senior, senior, and Liz Hoger, a junior. Everybody else are sophomores and freshmen out there. Here's Ann Gallagher, the senior. Teresa Gardner. Liz Holger steps up, swats that one out of bounds. Shot clock down to 10 for UB as they'll inbound from side court. Kim Kuhn to come in the ball game. Replacing Sharisa Gardner. And look for Catherine Jacob to hit a couple shots before this contest is over. She's been uncharacteristically quiet so far tonight. Kuhn comes in and gets the kind roll for three. That was a set play off the inbound. Great execution. And what a shooter's touch she had on that one. From deep in the corner. Cook to Hoger, down to Shannon Beach. Back outside, Hoger tries to answer for three. That's an air ball. Martin's got the rebound and draws a foul. Good reaction by Emory Martin. She saw that shot was going to be short. And, of course, after the game's over, Liz Hoger is going to tell Emory that was a pass, not an air ball. <laughs> But Anne Marie moved into position to catch that errant shot and try to finish the play around the basket and draws the foul. Anne Marie Martin has been a force in this second half. Can't get the foul shot, but she has been tough to contain down low. She has posed all kinds of problems for the UB Royals. 744 remaining. Both teams in the bonus. UB on top by five. The winner off to the NCAA tournament. Make it a four-point lead for UB. And we've got a timeout. 39-35. UB on top of Youngstown State, the Midcon Conference Championship game, back in a moment. Both coaches are pacing. <laughs> <laughs> Coach T. Gregorio's yeah. down at the <laughs> end of the court. Coach Sal Viscali has been back and forth like he's been in a maternity ward. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what close games will do for you. They take about 10 years off your stomach if you're a coach and give you Coach D's gray hair or take it away from you if you're set. It's a four-point lead for the University at Buffalo. Catherine Jacob. Granit Doty for three. No. Rebound, Kim Kuhn. And they'll start over. Doty to Gallagher. Second shots. Working offensive glass. Presents another opportunity. Gallagher fights for the rebound. She has it blocked by Anne-Marie Martin. Rebound by Prisoning. Good work by the Royals down low as they fight for a Boy, number of shots. That was a physical series right there. Lissette Prince comes ball, up the with it. Pass. Up strong in Gallagher. Doesn't go. They fight for the rebound. Rejection. <laughs> Anne Marie Martin, good job, not fouling. Ooh, and Colleen <laughs> Cook looked like she got all ball from here. Lissette Prince from Milton. Sophomore. Misses the first. This is them both. 
7.05 remaining in this one. Not it's a surprise. A yep, 55% shooter, Prince is. And Anne Marie Martin comes back and buries a three. And this is a one-point game. And that's what Coach Sal was concerned about, the versatility of the Lady Penguins. Anne Marie Martin, their post-up player, outside shooting a three and making it. Good pressure, D. I tell you, Colleen Cook has done a magnificent job on her this afternoon. Oh, she has. Both point guards, as we said, know each other very well, both out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Good defense by Youngstown State. UB will inbound them. Just underneath the basket and seven seconds on the shot clock. Liz Hoger comes out for catch her breath and a little bit of a rest, so she'll be ready for the stretch run. Let's see if UB has a set play here. They came up with a beautiful playoff, an inbound to side court. Jacob to Kuhn, shot clock at three. Kuhn fires one up that's long off the board, and the Lady Penguins come back with a chance to take the lead. Martin again for three, no, rebound. Prinsning pulls it down, and she will not have that taken away from her. Doty. Runs the show to Lissette Prinsning. Looks for the cutter, Kim Coon. Here's Gallagher, pulls up from the bow line and rattles it in. Earn that look at the basket, coming off a down screen, open at the foul line and knocks it home. The senior leader coming off a 20-point career high performance last night. Karen McCombs back in the game, playing with four fouls. Shelly Allen to McCombs. Good job not to lose that one out of bounds. Stolen away by Catherine Jacob. The freshman point guard comes up with a big D. Swing it to Doty for three. No. A big opportunity there. And the save by Kim Kuhn. Prinsning can't get a handle on it. And these oh, two teams hustle. are just <laughs> going at it. Wow, what great hustle we're seeing here today. That was a big opportunity. Brenna Doty has not had many good looks at the basket. When she has, she has made most of them. Couldn't convert that one. And Anne-Marie Martin comes back and is rejected by Lissette Prinsning, who has really stepped up in the last couple of minutes. Coming in for Nicole Blakesley. She's done an excellent job around the basket, blocking shots, protecting, and running the offense on the other end of the floor. Brenna Doty for three. No. A three-point UB lead, 440 remaining. Who will step up and be the hero for either of these two teams to make it to the NCAA tournament? Shannon Beach. Shelly Allen for three, buries it, and we're dead even. Shelly Allen wants the ball. Didn't hesitate to pull the trigger on that one, and went right through the middle. Jacob to Kuhn. And Gallagher. Jacob down the lane to Prinsning. Shot clock at eight. Here's Brenna Doty. Good first step. Works on Colin Cook. Oh, she drives the lane and she is fouled. Good strong move by Brenna Doty. That first step. Great baseline move. Anytime you get somebody in that position and give up, you're so vulnerable, you almost have to foul to prevent them from scoring the layup. There you see it. Oh, Cook, Tomahawks, Doty down to the ground. Well, and you know, when you drive to the basket, you expect to get hammered, and as a defender, you want to make sure if you're going to take a foul, you foul hard enough so they can't finish the play and it's not a three-point play. So Mission that was the right play by both people. Doty knocks it down. 4 one left. Colleen Cook with four, the backcourt of the Lady Penguins in foul trouble. Carolyn McCombs earlier in the game had four. Doty makes them both. UB up by two. They apply the pressure again. This time, Youngstown State breaks it rather easily. Colleen Cook down to Liz Hoger. Over the top of the defense, Sharissa oh, Gardner pass. comes back to prevent the layup, but a good... Good look and good, good pass. pass. Yep. Right over the top of the defense, looking for Shannon Beach. And this will be a one and one situation. Sharif 
Fourth foul on Charissa. She's the most athletic defender for the Royals, so they don't want to lose her. She's the one that's been matched up with Liz Hoger and has done an excellent job. At the line, Shannon Beach. Hoger in with only 11 points. Front end of the one on one, no good. Beach fights for it and comes away with it. Shannon Beach missed the front end of the one on one. 73% free throw shooter. There's Anne Marie Martin. Gets a handle on it. McCombs to Hoger. Comes over to Beach. Pressured by Prinsning. Foul outside. Both teams in a one-on-one, -on -one, of course. It's important to go to the foul line now in a close game and make your foul shots. Shannon Beach goes again. 73% shooter. Missed the front end on the last trip to the foul line. Run out of the one on one is missed again. And UB comes away with it. Charissa Gardner to Gallagher. Prinsley working for position down low. They've got it to her. She turns around and can't get it to go down, and this is still a two-point UB lead, and Youngstown State comes back. Anybody's game, three minutes to go, Brian. What a great contest this has been. Beach for three. No, off the side of the rim. And she comes up with the loose ball. Shannon Beach follows her own shot and ties the game at 43. She saw that was partially deflected, and she fouled the shot, laid it in for the easy score. Every possession critical. Catherine Jacob and Gallagher long off the iron. Prinsning is called for the foul, I believe, and a timeout is called by Youngstown State. Foul is on. Yes, Lisette Prinsning and Youngstown State will go to the line with a chance to take the lead. Ed DiGregorio has called a timeout, tied at 43, 2.28 left in this one. UB still has all three of their timeouts left. Youngstown State down to one with 2.28 to go. And Youngstown State at the line, an opportunity to take the lead. And at the line, the player they want there, Liz Holder. Liz Hoger, just about 80% from the free throw line. What you would describe as a complete player. She has the full package. She can hit the three. If you play her tight, she can beat you off the dribble. And she's a great passer. She'll get the ball if the defense rotates and doubles her. She'll get the ball to the open player. And she's a great foul shooter, 80% from the foul line. One of two. Prinsning hauls down the rebound. Catherine Jacob comes back for UB. The Lady Penguins on top by one. And Gallagher swings it to Jacob. Brenna Doty for three, yes! And no basket, oh, it is screen. waved off. No basket, moving screen before the shot. On Ann Gallagher setting in to coming in, and you can see her really stepping into the defender that time, and it was before the shot was released. Good call. So this, in essence, could be a five-point swing. Doty knocks down the three that is taken off the board, and this will put down at the line. 58% foul shooter at the line. Senior. Having a great day, by the way. Shelly Allen coming off the bench has performed very well for Coach D. Seven points off the bench. That's her eight. Three for six from the floor. Two rebounds. And just drills two foul shots. Three point lead. Give a three point Youngstown lead State. to the Lady Penguins. Catherine Jacob. UB has to answer now. Up to Ann Gallagher. Jacob looks to work it down low. Doty trying to get open, but she is still shadowed by Shannon. Shot clock down to 10. 
There's Brennan Doty, pulls back for three. Short off the iron, rebound Anne Marie Mark. Oh, that was a big rebound in traffic. Carolyn McCombs to Liz Hover. Now's when you rely on execution. Late in the game, when you need good shots to preserve your lead. There's Hogan in the corner, shot clock at five. She drives the lane, can't get it to go. Loose ball, Shelly Allen's got the rebound and oh, gets the new shot clock. Down low to Shannon Beach. Shelly Allen showing her senior experience. Two foul shots she made to give them a three-point cushion. Gets the offensive rebound and brings it back out to run a new clock. McCombs in the paint. Beach for three. Oh, that's a big one. And huge. that's huge. The Lady Penguins on top by six, and UB calls timeout. Youngstown State has shown their grit in this second half. They absolutely have. And now what the Royals will have to do with 52 seconds left to go, they'll have to try to get a shot off in the first 25 seconds right away as we're going to go look at the replay on this. Carolyn McCombs dribble penetration, kicks it out to Shannon Beach, who nails it from three-point range for the six-point cushion. They're going to want to get a shot off so that they can get two more possessions with the shot clock. And does a great job. Been at the helm at Youngstown State since 83. There it is. The Lady Penguins were down six at one point and came roaring back. 19-7. A lot of it with their inside game. Anne-Marie Martin really stepping up. And Shelly Allen, the senior off the bench. Coon drives. Offensive foul. And Shannon Beach, how about how big she's come up? She draws the charge on defense. Just made the three-pointer to give them the six-point cushion. We'll see full court pressure now. They'll try to get the turnover right away off the press and then foul if they don't get a turnover. There's the reach in. They don't get the foul ball. Now they foul Liz Hoger, and that's exactly what the Lady Penguins wanted. They want the ball in Liz's hands. 80% shooter. The junior leader, first team all Midcon Conference performer. Earning her rep today. Megan McCray will step into the ball game for UB. Replacing the set Pinsning. And Holger can make what is already going to be a large hill to climb for UB. Even tall. Knocks it down. Six of seven, seven point lead, 39 seconds to go. Three possession game. Solid defense, don't foul. UB's got to take it to the basket or pull up for the three, call timeout. 51 43, Youngstown State. Pray to. Jacob, Kuhn fires up a three, that's long off the iron, and Youngstown State has the rebound and the foul. And they're starting to whoop it up on the Youngstown State bench, and with good reason. And there's a timeout on the floor, taken by Youngstown State. Ed DeGregorio wants to know who took the timeout. He says, I did. <laughs> Tried to sneak one in, and, uh, and he got, it was charged to Youngstown State, so they have no timeouts left. Unless those baskets count for about four points apiece, it's a little late for uh, the Royals right now, but let's take this opportunity to give credit to this fine team of Coach Sal's this year. They've had a wonderful winning streak, 17 games in a row in Alumni Arena, and it's about to come to an end. But they're a young team. Everyone except Ian Gallagher will be back for next year's season. That's the good news. The bad news is that everybody on the Lady Penguins will return next year. Liz Hogger, the only junior on the starting lineup with four sophomores. 
That one rattles around and out, and Gallagher's got the rebound, but just 24 seconds left, down eight. Brennan Doty, trap, Jacobs. UB can't get the shot off. Megan McRae for three, no. Shannon Beach has it, and she will travel with the basketball, and that will give UB another crack at it, but there is only 10 seconds left. Catherine Jacobs pulls up and fires a three. Rebound to Shelly Allen, who is fouled. Just three seconds left. And they are officially celebrating now on the Youngstown State bench. They are a happy bunch. Coach D, long time coming, 13 years at the helm. Played in the final game last year and lost to Western Illinois. Got revenge in the first round of the tournament this year by knocking Western Illinois out. But you've got to wonder what that experience did for this squad to get them back here again today. Last year in the semifinals, Youngstown State beat UB. This year, both teams make it to the championship game, and it will be Youngstown State again. They will find out their fate tomorrow afternoon. The NCAA Tournament Selection Committee putting the pieces of the puzzle together. But as we wind it down, it's 53-43. The horn sounds and the Lady Penguins of Youngstown State are going wild. They're going to the NCAA Tournament and a tough, tough end of the season to what was a dynamite UB Royals basketball team. Youngstown State. Congratulations to, to both squads, Brian, because they both performed so well for the entire game. Congratulations. Great years. Terrific job by both teams. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll wrap it up with interviews and the trophy presentation. The Mid-Continent Conference Championship has been decided. The Mid-Con Conference champions, the Youngstown State Lady Penguins beat UB by 10, and Pete Lottergan is standing by with a happy head coach and their star player. Well, thank you, Brian. Pete Lonergan here with the winning coach, Ed Gregorio and Liz Hoger from the winning Lady Penguins. Coach, the streak is over here at Alumni Arena. How did you get it done today? Well, our kids were just determined. They're, uh, they're really a great bunch of kids, Pete, and uh, I love them all. Well, you, you could see the emotion on the sidelines, uh, kissing a few of the girls down the stretch run as the game ended. You have to be delighted about how everybody played, but talk for a minute about Shelly Allen coming off the bench and her senior, senior leadership and contribution today. Ten well, Shelly's been doing that for four years for us. That, this is nothing new. Uh, we just tell her uh, she'll pump it up, Pete, and she'll shoot it, and, and we tell her when she gets her feet planted, we tell all our kids, shoot the ball when you're open. We were a little bit tentative. Liz was a little bit tentative. We'll try to get her relaxed, get her, her legs behind the shot uh, because she's a great shooter. And Caroline McCombs didn't have a good because they were tentative about shooting. You got to shooting is a freelance thing. You got to be able to shoot it and shoot it and shoot it until you make it. Put it in the fish basket, as you said. Oh, you got to put in the fish in there. You heard that before, Liz? Huh? Let's talk to Liz for a second. Liz, what did playing in the championship game last year mean for you today? That experience coming back and knowing what it takes in this game to win. Well, like I said before, we were so emotionally distraught before when we lost. We know what it was like. We had the experience last year, and we didn't want to go home losing again. So we came back here, and we knew we had to play our hearts out, and we knew we could beat Buffalo. So we just came out and tried our best. Okay, I, we've got time for one quick question now. What did that green hair of Shannon Beach have to do with that win today? Well, we called her Rodman all year long because she's led us in rebounds. And she's just great. She hustles all over the place. And it was something to pump us up. Great. Well, congratulations to both of you. And best of luck representing the Midcon Conference in the NCAAs. And we're going to go back to Brian Blessing now. Okay, Pete. And uh, the UB Royals are... Uh, getting presentations at center court, and uh, we're going to take a timeout. When we come back, we'll show you the Lady Penguins of Youngstown State getting the championship trophy as they're heading to the NCAA tournament. Back at Alumni Arena, it's a tale of two benches, tears of sorrow on one side and tears of joy Absolutely. for Youngstown State. They're going to the big dance, Pete, a 10-point winner.
congratulations to the UB Royals, first of all, and of course to the champions, the Youngstown State Penguins. As we, as we predicted, Brian, the team that with two evenly matched teams, the squad that made the last run would be the winner, and that's exactly what happened this afternoon. Congratulations to UB for a terrific season, and congratulations to Youngstown State. The Lady Penguins are champions of the Mid-Continent Conference. They're off to the NCAA tournament. For Pete Lonergan, this is Brian Blessing. Thanks for joining us. Youngstown State's the big winner. They're off to the big dance.